Hey guys, welcome back to a, another Kickstarter update. I hope everybody is doing well. Today we are working on the man on the cross. And like the previous um, pieces in this set, we are painting the wood bits first. And like the previous pieces, we are painting the wood bits exactly the same. We first paint a dark brown. And then for the highlight color, we paint um, over that with a dry brush of a lighter brown. Just to give it some variety. Um, because in the natural world, if you look at real wood, it is a, a bunch of different browns and colors. It's not one solid color. And so painting as many pieces as we have to paint, we can't add too many highlights because it would just take us forever on every single piece. But we want to make these pieces also look great um, for you guys. So. That's why we just, we don't paint it just one base color and, and that's it. We add highlights to certain, um, parts of the miniature. And this is what we do on the wood bits. So, um, this takes probably the longest because it's, um, there's just so much wood on the piece and you you don't really have to be careful except uh, around the flesh um, parts of the piece um, because I don't want to go back and and uh, have to fix any of my mistakes like on the pants or um, on the base it's not a big problem not a big deal because just come back and correct that when we paint those different parts but because of the flesh um, bits, uh, we don't go back and paint it any other color. Um, the only thing that we do after the primer is we put two coats of wash on it and that's it. And then if you've been following along, um, the last update was on the skeleton. And so the difference between the base coat of the skeleton and the man hanging on the cross is uh, the base coat for the skeleton we used a pure white and for the for this guy we used an off-white and the reason why we did that is because um, the pure white when we add the two different washes the the dark brown wash and then the black wash um, on the skeleton bits um, it looks like bone. So we didn't want to do that with, uh, the flesh tone. So we used an off white and it actually surprisingly turns out pretty nice after we add the two whites or the two washes, the brown wash and the, the black wash. It gives it a nice flesh tone, um, color to it. And then, um, for the woman hanging on the cross, um, we use a totally different base code for that. It's more of a, uh, a, a pink base coat. Um, and then we use the same wash, the two washes technique. And she comes out looking like a uh, nice, healthy looking flesh tone. So it's pretty cool the different experiments um, with the with the paint schemes that you can come up with, and you know that's one of the joys of of painting miniatures. I think is is there's so many different ways that you can paint a miniature, and to have it come out looking totally different. And speaking of painting, I think that. Um... I mentioned this before to you guys in the previous update about our new website 
that we are working on. And um, hopefully it'll be launching here in the next week or so. But one of the cool things that we are going to have on our website is a monthly painting contest. And we're going to do things a little different. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to select three contestants every single month to participate in the painting contest. And you don't have to buy anything. Um, you just have to love to paint, have your own paints and live in the U S. And so what you, what you'll do is you'll fill out a little form on our website and letting us know that, yeah, you want to participate in the painting contest. And so what we'll do is uh, we'll send you the pieces that are going to be for that month's um, painting contest. We will ship them out to you. You will paint them and then you send us back um, uh, at least four pictures and a little write up. Um, and we will post that on our contest page. And then folks will be able to um, vote for um, whose painting they like best. So we're going to do that every single month. And there's going to be some cool prizes that's involved. And uh, we think it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, we're going to do that every month, like I said. And so it's just one um, cool features of our new website. One of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to showcase um, and give back to um, our customers that support us. And that's you guys. And one of the ways is a painting contest. You don't have to purchase anything. We send you the pieces. Um, another thing that we're doing on our website is a loyalty program where based on your activities or interactions with us, you can um, receive loyalty points. And once you accumulated at least 15 points, you can redeem those points for free product and the free product will change every single month. So it's just one of the cool things that we have um, that we're going to do. Just one way um, uh, that we wanted to say thank you to everybody that um, supports us. And we wanted to make our website fun. We we, you know, we, we don't want to just have a cool website with cool products and, uh, we wanted to in, involve you guys in the process. And, um, also one of the other cool things we're going to have is a way that you can submit your ideas to us of what you want us to make. And, um, we will also reward you, um, on submitting ideas. So if you are, have a campaign that you wanted some special piece for, or you submit that and, um, we'll, uh, we'll take a look. If we like it, then, um, we'll, we'll make it. So, um, and there's also, also lots of other cool things, but after this, um, painting the wood bits, we are going to move on to the second step, which is painting the hair.
All right, so here we are on to painting the hair. So because we use so much um, uh, dark brown already in this piece for the cross, for all the wood bits, I wanted to make sure I used a lighter brown for his hair to give it some contrast. And um, so that's what I found that when you're painting miniatures, you want to use contrasts. So you don't want to use all the same color um, because then it kind of just all blends together. And it just, um, it's not really fun to look at. You can use different color browns. Um, that's totally fine. Is, as long as they're contrasting browns. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here with his hair. And his hair is one of the areas that I did go back and add some highlights to. And when painting hair, what I have found is it's it's best to paint with the hair. Um, and especially when you're adding highlights, it just makes it more realistic. Also, when you add highlights to hair, um, it, it gives it more depth versus just leaving it one solid color. And hair is where you can spend um, a lot of time on, especially um, with fur and animals, because there's so many different highlights that you can add so many different layers and and that's what painting is all about it's just it's just about adding layers um where you can you can paint several different layers on top of each other to give um whatever you're painting depth and realism to the piece All right, so after we finish painting the hair and all the pieces, we are going to next move and start working on the pants. All right, here we are. We're going to paint this guy's pants. And we are going with uh, some green pants. I think uh, I think that suits this guy. Um, nice dungeon look form, I think. Um, you know, this kind of reminds me <clears throat> painting this guy. Back when I first started painting miniatures, man, I, I wish I still had one of my old miniatures that I painted. But uh, man, it was it was terrible. It was awful. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I didn't know any cool techniques or special um, ways to paint. I just I just put some paint on the guy, <laughs> and it, it it didn't turn out too well. But uh, you know that's okay, cause that's how you learn. And if if anybody is wanting to learn how to paint miniatures but they think that it's just, it's just too hard. I would say that it's just, it comes down to practice and practice, practice, 
And the cool thing is, as the more miniatures that you paint, you'll come up with your own technique, your own way of painting the miniatures. And pretty soon, you'll start getting good at it. And you'll paint a miniature and you'll finish painting. You'll be like, wow, this guy doesn't look half bad. And that's the cool thing when when all the the effort and the time that you put into painting, you actually start seeing the results. And the more you paint, the better you'll get at it. And so I, I would just say go for it. Start painting some miniatures and don't think that you have to have the most expensive brushes, um, the most high-end paint, because you don't. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Um, I don't use all the time the most expensive paints. I use a lot of craft paint. And um, I do that because it's a heck of a lot less expensive. And you can get the same results from craft paint that you can buy at any local, um, your local hobby shop that you can with high expensive so-called um, miniature paints. Now, I, some people may disagree, but um, in my opinion, that is what I have found. And um, I use brushes from the craft store. Now, I do have high-end brushes I use for um, painting more detailed um, parts of the miniature. But um, I also use just cheap, inexpensive craft, craft brushes that uh, you can buy at any hobby shop. And those are great for like dry brushing, for instance. You know, you buy a, a five, six dollar brush because when you're dry brushing, or when you're putting on washes, you don't need a super expensive brush to do that, nor do you want to. Um, you don't want to ruin your good brushes for that kind of thing. And also one thing that has helped me um, is sometimes I use a, uh, a magnifying glass that is lit up. I can't remember, I don't even know what they're called, but they're, they're just like a desk lamp that they have like this little window on it with, uh, and it's the glass is, has a, um, is magnetized, uh, not magnetized, but uh, has a magnifying lens in it. And, um, so I'll show you that here, how I use that. I'll see if I can set it up where I can get the camera to be looking through the lens. And then while, I'm painting. Okay, so here it is. I got the camera looking through the magnifying lens. Um, and this really helps because I, I can pinpoint sometimes, especially when the piece is uh, all one color um, like this uh, miniature is that the base coat it makes it's all white and so it's kind of hard to tell where one piece or one part of the miniature begins and when the other part ends and so um having it blown up it really helps to make sure that you stay within the lines <laughs> uh, because it minimizes mistakes and um, it makes the painting process faster. Because uh, then you don't have to go back and fix mistakes that you made. And so I use this quite often. And it, it actually uh, is more fun to paint 
with one of these things. Um, and it's helped me a lot. Especially right here towards the bottom of his pants where I want to make sure that I don't get any of the green paint on his legs. Because I don't want to have to go back and and touch up his legs because again remember I did not paint his legs from um, uh, a bottle. This was just the base coat that I sprayed onto him. And I don't go back and touch any of the, the, uh, the skin bits at all. After the base coat, the only thing that I do, um, uh, the only thing that I paint over the skin bits is the brown wash and the black wash. And that's it. And if I didn't use this magnifying glass, then it, um, you know, potentially I would have, have to go back and fix mistakes that I made. So this is really helpful. And this is one of the things that you'll find out when you're starting to paint miniatures is that the right tools make it more fun and, uh, helps you to become a better painter. Now, I know I talked about this before about you don't need expensive brushes and you don't do expensive brushes, make it more enjoyable to paint. Yes, I would say they do, especially for certain applications. Um, so, the paintbrush that I'm using to paint his pants. Now this is a pretty, this is an expensive brush. I mean, it's like $25 for that one paintbrush. Um, but for this particular application where, you know, there's, there's little details, um, especially on the edges of his pants. I want to make sure that I have a nice brush that holds a, um, a good point so that I don't make any mistakes. And um, so in this case, having a nice paintbrush, it makes painting definitely more enjoyable. Is it gonna make you a better, better painter? Um, it depends on how you use it. I mean, I could have, I could be using this expensive paintbrush and still um, paint up this miniature horribly <laughs> but it, it definitely helps having a, a a better paintbrush but with that being said there are inexpensive paintbrushes that you could get at the at the craft store and some, when I go to the craft store looking for a paintbrush, um, I make sure that I get the best paintbrush that I can because they'll have them in little bins and some paintbrushes will have um, really bad hairs at the tip and some of them won't. So you just got to go and try to find the best paintbrush that you can. But with, with all that, being said, just don't be fooled and think that you have to have the best of everything to get started in painting because you don't. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna move on and paint is his shirt. Sorry, I lied, we're painting his 
belt next, not his shirt. I got my I got my steps mixed up. So painting his belt, I'm painting the belt the same uh, color I painted his hair. And uh, this is, again, one of the pieces or areas of the miniature that I did go back and add some highlights to the belt. And uh, when I say adding highlights, um, I just go back with a lighter shade of brown and I just hit the very uh, tops of his belt just to add some variety and some depth to the piece. And um, after I add the wash to it, you can really see the highlights in it. It makes a difference. Again, this is one of the pieces, um, I guess any miniature, you can spend so much time painting, adding layers, and um, making it as realistic as possible. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, some people spend so much time painting just one miniature, um, and that's great. I mean, you can do that. I love painting miniatures. It's it's a it's almost therapeutic for me. But when you're painting in batches like we're doing, um, when you're painting 40, 50 miniatures at a time, you just can't go back and add all the different layers that you would like to. Um, but still, you'll see at the end, he still turns out really, really nice. And I think you guys will be really happy with the um the quality of the paint job that we're offering okay so now after the belts are all painted we are then moving on and painting his shirt All right, so we're moving on to painting his shirt, and this is a one of those areas again where I'm using my um, magnifying desk lamp to aid me in painting his shirt. Because um, again, sometimes it's a little difficult to tell where the shirt um, ends and where his skin begins. So this really helps. This may seem like a bright color that I'm using for his shirt, but one thing you got to remember about paints is they always dry darker than um, when you first put them on. And then also you got to remember is we're going to be adding two washes to this miniature. So that's really going to tone down his shirt quite a bit. So it's not going to be so bright. And also remember that there's a lot of LED light shining on his shirt at the moment. And it's wet paint. So that also makes it look brighter than it, it actually will be.
All right, after we paint his shirt, then we are going to move on and paint the base. All right, on to painting the base. Here we are using a dark charcoal and it's a same exact um, color that we are using for all of the bases um, for the crosses in this set, just to make them all look the same. So the initial base coat is this dark charcoal color. And then I go over it with a, um, a dry brush of a light gray. And what that does is it brings out all the little details in the base. Because this base has um, a lot of uneven, rocky texture to it. And so after, um, you can't see it here, but after I add the dry brush, it really brings out those, all those little details in the, in the base. All right, after we finish painting all the um, the initial base coat for all the bases uh, for the pieces, then we are going to move on and start working on the shackles. All right, on to painting the shackles. So as I start to paint the first um, shackle on this guy, I realize, wait a second, this doesn't look right. So I started painting the, the shackle the wrong color paint, and I had to go back and grab the right paint. You know, that's important, using the right paint. Or the right color paint, anyway, I should say. So I just realized this video is over 30 minutes long. And uh, that's a little that's a little too long, I think. Um, I, you know, I don't know how much of this you guys want to watch. Um, but uh, if, if you like these long videos, if you want to see the uh, um, the complete process or a lot of it anyway let me know and I'll definitely keep posting these longer videos but uh, I just wanted to share this with you and I, I I hope it's been helpful for you to see what we're doing for you guys to make sure that you have good quality paint and miniatures but I'm gonna cut a lot of this um, out you've seen this with um the first and second uh updates with the um um the first cross and then the skeleton on the cross so i'm just going through painting all the shackles and then once i finish that then i'm going to add some uh, uh the dry brush on the base and then the next step that we'll watch is um, the uh, adding the washes. Okay, we have already applied the brown wash to all of the pieces. We are doing one of the final steps now and adding the black wash. And if you can believe it, um, check out this guy. Remember how um, 
white he his skin looked. Um, so now check it out. Um, his skin looks a little uh, on the yellowish side to me, but when you after the black wash is applied and dries, it um, it really tones that down, and he kind of has like a, a a sickly skin tone to him, which I think is fitting because this guy doesn't seem like he has a whole lot of life left in him. He's been hanging on the cross a little while. Not as long as the skeleton, for sure, but I mean, his clothes are tattered. He's got holes in his pants. He has no shoes. Um, he's got He's got some cuts and gouges in his arms and his legs. So he's he's been on there for a while. Um, and we are going to use a different technique for when we move over for uh, painting the, the woman on the cross. So we're going to use a totally different base coat. What we're going to do is we're going to add more of a, um, it's a pink, uh, uh, primer and it looks kind of funny initially because you're like wow that looks horrible why did you paint it pink but after you paint it after you add the washes the little technique that we do her skin looks like human um uh flesh tone it looks healthy it looks like that she just got slapped up on the cross She's only been hanging there probably for a couple hours. So um, it looks good. And uh, I like it when you put all three of them together, the skeleton, the man on the cross, the woman on the cross. Um, they all look different. You know, the, the skeleton has his little bone bits. That looks different than the, the skin tone for the man on the cross and then his skin tone looks different than the woman on the cross. Um, I didn't want all of them to be look the same, you know, it has to look, has to look different cause, um, add some uniqueness to the, to the pieces. Um, does it take a little bit longer? Yeah, it takes a little bit longer. We could have spray, we could have primered all these in one big batch, the same color, but, it's, it's not going to add the realism that I was going for and the uniqueness to every single piece, which I think that you guys will, um, will like when you receive the pieces. I think you'll be happy with them. So we're going to go through and um, finish up adding the washes, the brown wash or the black wash to all these pieces. And uh, we're going to call this update um, finished. The long update it's going on 40 minutes wow that's a long time um but uh i hope you like seeing some of the process of what's been going on in the back end and uh what we go through to painting up these pieces and uh also if you have any questions for me uh you want to get a hold of me for some reason if you want to um, participate in the painting contest, uh, we're probably not going to do it this month, but we're going to shoot for um, for April. So if our web website gets um, completed before then, which I think it will. So um, my email is dungeonlair.com at gmail.com so feel free to reach out to me anytime and then also um, my skype id um, is dungeon lair so anybody uses skype if you want to reach out to me you have a question for me um, feel free to reach out to me through email or through skype uh, i'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have and uh um, one question is, is, Hey, when I'm going to receive my pieces, <laughs> um, I know we're working on it. We're, we're trying to get the first batch, um, painted as quickly as we can and get them sent out to you. 
I know you're, um, you're itching to receive the pieces and we're, um, equally as excited, uh, to get these pieces out to you. Um, so we're doing our best. We appreciate, um, your support. We, um, we value your opinion and we value you as, uh, a customer of ours and we don't take that lightly and everything that we are we are doing here at dungeon lair is um for you and to make your stay with us as enjoyable as possible and that's one thing that one reason why we spent some money um in building a brand new website is to make your stay with us more enjoyable and to give back to you with the many cool perks that we have on our new website coming out. Because without you, we're nothing. We realize that. We understand that. And um, it's, it's, not just, it's not just words. It's really, truly how I feel. I, I love it when I hear um, comments from you guys. Um, it It's a joy to hear what you have to say. It's a joy to me to hear your, your comments, your opinions, because what you have to say to me is, is really important. And I appreciate you taking your time and uh, reaching out to us and supporting us. So with that said, I'm going to end this, um, end this update. You guys take care. And until next time, um, you have a great day. And um, see you next time.